Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you a little tool for someone who's not a full-time electrician. If you do maintenance, you do car work, car repair, uh, even DIYers. Uh, Fluke makes a little uh, handy electrical tester for when you don't need to know every single detail about what you're working on. Now, if you're designing circuits and stuff like that, yeah, this is probably a little rudimentary for you but if you do like I do and you check you check uh, fuses you check continuity of wires you have to get voltages both AC and DC and you don't want to worry about switching back and forth or a dial full of uh, readings that you don't know what any of them mean you know like if you're not a electrician by trade you're not going to know all those extra little pieces like that or you might, but I don't use them every day, so I don't know what they mean. Micro fair ads and all that stuff. That's that's a little beyond my work day duty. So the Fluke T6 1000 Pro might be what you might need there. Simple operation. This little dial, it's got three settings. Voltage. It auto selects AC or DC. You can see the the AC and DC symbol right above the V. Uh, field sense, get to that in a second. That's a little uh, different reading operation, but gives you a little more information than just whether or not you got voltage going through there. And then ohms, or resistance and continuity. That's when you want to check uh, if you've got a wire that's not broken somewhere, or you've got a fuse that's working. You know, you want to make sure your electrical circuit is complete and not open somewhere. So let's go through them here. Uh, voltage. Auto detection voltage. So we slip our leads out of the back. Set that there. I just happen to have a handy 18 volt battery we can test out. So I don't know if you can see the... let me get this straight so we can read the reading. Uh, if you see here we're reading on AC right now. Zero volts AC. Now, if we watch the... Not a very good angle on there, is it? Watch the uh, magic happen. I can do this without blocking everything up. We've got our positive lead. we got our negative lead. We're going to have to go over the top. Now we got 19 volts DC right there. So that's the auto switching feature. That's going to tell you what your voltage reading is right there without having to switch a button every time you get around something there. Uh, we're going to go and check the... I got a extension cord plugged in. And we'll check for AC voltage. And then we got it, 120 AC. Also got a little indicator of the... Uh, the red light blowing up with the electrical sign. All right. Uh, for ohms and resistance, like I say, you want to check uh, a fuse. We're, we're in 480 mostly up at the where I work, industrial setting. So here's another handy feature. You want one handed operation? There you go. You'll get a motor that's driving a machine. It'll start acting weird, kind of sounding funny. You suspect it's single phasing, so you've probably got a leg out. Each leg is, you know, driving the motor. And then you'll have three corresponding fuses in a disconnect box somewhere, so you go to check them. Okay, that one's good, but, you know, you check all three and make sure it's not your fuses. Here's another little... uh little feature, you get a little green backlight and an audible sound when you get uh, continuity. Good shot on there. But the green light's going to be good, I think, in those situations where, like I work on, you'll have machines running very loud, so you won't hear that beeping, but you just watch the screen, it'll go from OL, open line, and then you'll have the green backlight. Kind of hard to see right there, but so there we go. That's your ohms and resistance. Uh, continuity of a, of a cable or a wire. You want to make sure 
you don't have a break in it somewhere. Same idea. It's just uh, not the fuses. Let's put this up here where we can see it. So yeah, it's the same thing. You want to check that cable, make sure it hadn't been broken somewhere. All your wires are getting power. There you go. Uh, the field sense is something that I don't often use. Uh, most of the time we have good connections everywhere where we can get to, but I can see where sometimes you'd have a long run of wire and you don't have a, a good break in it so you could get your probe in there to test it. Uh, in that case, you'd run it over here, your field sense. Uh, you can use your, if you've got somewhere you can ground off to, the conduit or something like that, or if you're in the electrical box, you know, just run it on the ground side. Uh, you can clip it on here so it's easier one-handed operation, or you can use the probe, you know, if you're, if you're able to. Use the alligator clip, you come off like that, then you would ground off to whatever. It's in your box, and you take your connector. This is still the same uh, extension cord. And you see, it's got a reading in there. It may not be right, because we don't have a load on or anything, but it's showing 45 volts. But then again, you've got all three connectors going, all three uh, uh, wires going through there. Lost my mind for a minute. So you may not get a correct reading on this, but if you had single conductors going through there, your readings would be pretty accurate. And they say on the field sense, they have a 3% either way, plus or minus variance. So you may or may not get super accurate readings. But for what I do, I don't need to know the exact amperage and voltage. Obviously, you can tell when something looks off if you've been doing it long enough. If you're expecting uh, 270 and you're getting 25, then, you know, something's off. So... Uh, the uh, also yeah backlighting works in that one also and then let's uh, say you run it you do want to know the hertz or the the cycles you can switch it over and it'll it'll throw the bottom description down there as 60 hertz switch back to voltage also you got the hold you can come back off and write down your readings so yeah pretty simple operation. Uh, you don't have to learn a whole, whole bunch. Of course, you don't want to be playing around inside electric boxes if you don't have any experience. It's, uh, especially in industrial high voltage, you're not going to like it if it happens. So, uh, any other cool things? Yeah, I showed you the, uh, comes with the handy holster that you can keep your leads tied up with. I think that's probably one of the a nicer little options here. You get your leads in there, tie them up. I usually keep my other one in a hard case because I'd put it in my box and in my bag and you put other tools in there, they get wrapped up around there, you try to take your meter out and everything comes out. So that's pretty pretty handy. So there it is, the Folk, the, I'm sorry, the Fluke T6 1000 Pro. Simple, easy to use, uh, a lot of good readings if you're not looking to know every single thing about what you're doing in there. If you need that, you probably should go with the, one of the other Flukes models. So try that out and see what you think. Thanks for watching.